Now, the next step we're going to take, which we won't have a lot of time to do today, and we'll do most of it on Monday, is to say, fine, we're, we're now skilled at predicting what the future momentum of a system will be if we know its momentum now and we know uh, the net force acting on it. But that doesn't solve all the, that doesn't do everything we want to do because knowing the momentum of a system is nice, but we want to know where it's going to be. We want to know how it's going to move. And so we want to know if this comet is just going to travel around the sun in a parabola and go back in outer space and never come back, or whether it's going to, going to orbit. Are these two stars going to orbit each other as binary stars? What is this electron going to do when it gets near that proton? If we shoot alpha particles at gold foil, how are they going to be deflected? Um, what's going to happen to the hockey puck? When the player hits it with a stick, what direction is it going to go in? How fast will it go? How far is it? Where is it going to be? So we want to be able to predict positions. And the problem we have to solve is we know how to predict positions. We've done that. Final location is initial location plus V average delta T. But the problem is that the velocity of the object is changing. Its momentum is changing because forces are acting on it. So the question we really need to address is, how are we going to predict position when the momentum of an object is changing? And basically, what we're going to have to do is do it step by step and do, do many steps. But the basic thing we're going to end up doing is going to look like this. So we're going to say, OK, we have some initial momentum, that's the momentum now of something, and we have its position now, and we know the net force acting on it now. So we're going to use the momentum principle. We're going to say, okay, in the future, sometime in the future, its momentum will be momentum now plus F net delta t, now we have the future momentum. We go, oh, I can extract a velocity out of that. And I can do it really very simply, because as long as the thing is not moving near the speed of light, gamma is approximately 1. And so therefore, I can say its velocity in the future is approximately just its future momentum over its mass. And now we can use the, our, the position update formula. The final position is the initial position plus the average delta t. But wait a minute. What number do we use for v average? Yes. That's an r. What do we do for V average, though? Hmm. Well, we'll explore this more next time. What we do is going to depend a little on what we know about the forces. So if, let's just talk about an X component of velocity for a minute. If we see that the velocity and the x component of velocity, therefore the x component of momentum is increasing linearly with time, we can say, well, fine. We'll just take the actual average. We'll just add v final plus v initial over 2. That's an average. That's pretty good for that. If it's not changing linearly, so suppose it does that, and that's sort of extreme. Then if we take some time interval here and say, well, we're we going to average those two speeds, it's not, it's not very good. So often it's going to turn out that it just makes more sense to use 
the future velocity as an approximation to it. And we'll do more of that next time.